Hey everyone, what's going on? My name is Danny Giesling and welcome to another Star Citizen Opinion video. In this video, we're going to be talking about the most exciting things from this past weeks around the verse and a lot of it focused on derelict ships but that's not what I'm most excited about although we are going to talk about derelict ships in this video. What I'm most excited about is the fact that we got a chance to see a Nox transferred successfully from space flying around in space into a Drake Cutlass and that it successfully works. You say, well, Dan, why do you get so excited about that? Because to me, that's what I'm more interested in gameplay than than the fancy graphics. Now, of course, the graphics are, are such a huge part of the game, but the fact that these uh, previously unplayed mechanics, like the ability to transfer a ship, uh, you know, we just we just tried moving a Merlin from Alisar to Korea, and it was just very technically difficult. But now it's actually happening in upcoming in 3.0. The other thing I'm most excited about is the fact we had a chance to see cargo being moved around and delivered, and we've seen that before. But just getting a chance to see a cutlass blown up, and then seeing the the fragments of cargo expelling outside of it—that's going to be exciting. And just the fact that. It's going to be such a huge part of 3.0 and the next iteration we get to play moving forward. It's just, I just get excited for that chance to move around cargo to perhaps uh, take over pirates and, and uh, shoot them and get a reward for it. Um, the other thing I found very interesting, we had a chance to look at the early HUD that you just saw there of uh, you know how you can purchase and transfer uh, cargo. Another quick thing they instituted is they instituted a new style of landing gear that's more fluid. Uh, you can see here as the, the ships land, it's, it's not a straight edge buckle it actually the gears bend themselves and it looks more fluid and that's actually going to be based upon the weight of the ship and and of course the train underneath which i found was really uh pretty cool the other thing we, we've learned that the, the hurricanes move forward i believe it's in the initial white boxing phase and you know i get excited for new ships but i think i'm at the point where i get more excited for the the gameplay systems being instituted yeah the hurricane's gonna be cool and i know there's gonna be more concept ships coming out but seeing the cargo uh in particular and the ships being able to to land inside each other something I'm personally more excited about because that means we're that much closer to 3.0. Uh, some other things that have been going on is, is they also developed a look like to at least two uh, new uh, civilian outfits that they're sharing with us. They said they developed a bunch of civilian outfits for NPCs uh, for the upcoming 3.0 release to go ahead and um, you know make things a little more interesting in terms of diversity of how uh, of the clothing that NPCs will be wearing moving forward. Now, the major focus of this episode was the fact that there are derelict ships. And what is derelict ships? Because it can have a lot of connotation if you have no idea what the heck we're talking about. So in terms of derelict ship, they're talking about ships that have crashed or ships that are no longer functional that have been either um, exploded, uh, destroyed, uh, stuck in the mud not necessarily in the mud but in the desert just ships that are no longer functional and there was a lot of emphasis placed on this throughout the around the verse because it's going to help diversify what we see on the planet side so you know not to call out things but you know when you skim a planet in elite dangerous there's only so much going on but this allows the developers to sprinkle uh, across certain planets or moons with derelict ships so and these derelict ships are then going to be turned into different things they could be bases they could be uh, banded outposts they, there could be hidden stuff in them uh, they went ahead in the around the verse and said that 80 percent of them will actually contain nothing but 20 percent of them will actually have some sort of element inside of them in particular one of the things i found most interesting that they they mentioned that you'll find in i'm gonna assume in 3.0 they said You'll find a derelict ship where a part of it may still be functional. For example, one turret they mentioned by specific example will still be functional. So say you find a crashed freelancer and the turret on top is still functional. Can you imagine the gameplay ramifications that that will have if someone or a group or an organization like WHP takes over is able to hold a, a planet side derelict ship base with an active turret those are the type of things i'm excited about in star citizen and not all of them are going to be active you have to go ahead and search and skim the planet side and that, that's something new that i also learned in this around the verse that moving forward every ship that that is instituted in the game is now going to have a phase where it becomes a derelict ship so it goes from some from concept to white boxing all the way to finished product and then after that they have a derelict ship because the goal is to have every ship 
be crashed or have an example of a crash ship wherever. And I think that's cool because they're juicing their assets, right? So they're putting all this this time, money, and effort into into creating these ships. And then ahead, you can go ahead and use those as assets throughout the game to make for interesting locales. So it makes for, you know, seeing the development of how far the breaking apart and how far they're juicing these ships um, to make for interesting locations is really exciting because you got to wonder in a game like Star Citizen that it's going to be so vast, how do they keep the locations interesting and, and keep people interested in, in exploring? So I'm pretty fired up about that. Uh, the, the cool thing is that they're not just slapping these random assets together, right? So they're not just going to be dropping, um, you know, prefab stuff. They, they mentioned that the way that they designed it, they they designed it so it can they can be dropped in three different biomes. They mentioned in particular a, a swamp biome, a desert biome, and an Arctic or snow type biome and how each ship looks a little different when it's crashed in each and and they also said that each crash ship or each derelict ship has a story and it's up to you to figure out what that story is so they're not just randomly throwing stuff down they, they're putting a lot of thought behind hey why did this one crash how did it crash did it get shot down what's inside of it are we going to leave any clues inside the ship to let you know about the story of the ship and i found that very insightful that you know and i think it's, it shouldn't be surprising for anyone it, who's been a fan of star citizen to see the care and detail they're putting in to each element of the ship even something as you may think as simple as spreading crash ships or derelict ships throughout the universe they're not they're not taking any shortcuts and you know as someone who's very excited about star citizen i think it just reassures everyone as to what we should expect moving forward Another thing that they instituted was you saw a few windmills and i found that a little odd at first but it made sense you know some of these these ships are going to need to have power, and so they instituted windmills uh, so that, like, a bandit or, a, you know, an outpost-type ba base has the chance to bring power to a derelict ship. So I think that's that's also pretty cool that they found different ways. It's almost, I don't really call it fall fallouty, but, you know, it's... it's it's finding ways for NPCs and other players to maximize every single locale because it doesn't make sense for there to be power to be run out to a, a, uh, a random location. And it provides a little diversity outside of solar panels. So there's a lot going on in terms of this around the verse, in particular with uh, the derelict ships and, and also the, the front end elements that I covered at the beginning of this episode that seemed like they kind of brushed over. Uh, but let me know what you guys think about the derelict ships and if you're just as excited about cargo as I am in, in the upcoming release of 3.0 thank you guys so much for watching this video if you guys enjoyed it clicking the like button helps out a great deal as always if you're new to the channel welcome uh, we cover star citizen on the channel every single morning at 9 a.m eastern standard time releasing a new gameplay video uh, but thank you guys so much for support for the support of star citizen on this channel i've been having so much fun with it and you know i get so hyped with the release of these new around the verses just because i think we're so close to 3.0 can't wait for it um, and i'm excited to cover that soon in the channel as soon as we get our hands on it but thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.